pink Corbin dry is good. Any variation of pink Corbin dry is bad, such as modeling. Modeling begins with M and it looks like marble. And patients who look and act like inanimate marble statues are sick. Because shocky people, blood doesn't go to the skin. You get this nasty, blotchy, marbly look to your skin. However, especially in children, remember, can you be modeled and not be sick? Oh, absolutely. Take my daughter, put her in a swimming pool, stand her on the deck for more than a minute or two. How does she look? Horribly modeled. Is she sick? No, she's cute. <laughs> But if you're modeled and you're sick, putting two and two together, those little kids are sick. But what about this kid, sick or not sick? Mm -hmm. Most people, you're exactly right, are kind of on the fence. He's got a couple tubes, he's a little pale, and I've got a picture. Mm -hmm. However, what little known medical sign is he showing you that says he's not going to die in the back of your rig? Perfect! A positive arm behind the head sign. <laughs> that is wonderfully diagnostic, because what do dead people do with their arms? Good! It's not a trick question. They pretty much lay there and look dead. This is a typical man. <laughs> he has one arm by his head. Yep! What's he doing with the other arm? It is a beautiful sign. If you can hang out, smile, put your arm right in your head, you know what? You ain't gonna die in the next five minutes. But what about blue? Well, blue begins with B and therefore it's bad. Now, people are freaky when they're blue, and appropriately so. But remember from when y'all did your OB rotations that you can be blue in two areas, right? And that's called the inside and the outside. And if you're blue on the inside, that's called central cyanosis. And that means you're hypoxic. And you gotta be downright hypoxic to turn purple. You gotta work at it. <laughs> but when you take a look at this little one, where's this little one blue? Yeah, just in the outside. Pink fancy medical term called acrocyanosis. Otherwise known as pink on the inside, blue on the outside. And what does that mean? He's cold. This is a perfectly healthy, nothing wrong with you baby that was kind enough to deliver at my ER triage desk. <laughs> now, why this an issue is think about it. You go from 90 degree mom to 68 degree ER. So right there, you drop 30 degrees. However, step two, remember from basic burn care that if you're wet, you get cold 30 times faster than if you're dry. So if you're soaking wet, you're covered in goo, and you come out into a cold ambulance, you're going to get cold, and they show you they're cold by turning purple. So can you give this kid some oxygen? Sure. Is it going to make him any better? No. Is it going to make you feel better? Absolutely! So feel free! <laughs> now, the only caveat to that is if, on your days off, you happen to play with somebody's baby ICU transport team. And if you play with somebody's transport team and you get dispatched for a big old baby who's got a really funny looking heart, whereas all of the plumbing is flipped upside down and backwards, <clears throat> you know what, incredibly rare. But if you're doing transport with a funky heart kid, you know what, yes, you need to be careful with oxygen. But outside of NICU, transports with a funky heart kid, you know what, if they're purple, well, give them oxygen. If they don't pick up, try warming them up. And you know what, the blue tends to go away. But what about these things? Gotta love them. Gotta get them. Is it incredibly important to know 3 o'clock in the morning, the normal heart rate in infant is 120-160, school age children 75 to 100. The normal respiratory rate in the toddler was 24 to 40, and let's say 12 to 16. And even better, the normal systolic and blood pressure in an neonate is 60 to 90. However, the normal diastolic blood pressure in a school age child is 54 to 80. No! Because you have way too many numbers to memorize. 
Do a couple things in real life regarding numbers. Number one, don't memorize them. Number two, get yourself a chart. <laughs> Remember that throughout this morning, all of the toys that we're touching on, the examples are up front. So just at your break, if you want to come take a peek, feel free. But remember, when it comes to charts, that there are several charts out there, and they are all small. They are all cheap. They all fit in your pocket. They are all blood and bodily fluid resistant. They do not require batteries or internet access. And most importantly, remember, they are made by smart people that are not stressed. <laughs> And having something when you are stressed at 3.30 in the morning that reminds you, this size tube, this much epi, this is a normal blood pressure. Especially when it comes to kids, you know what, it just makes your life a whole lot more pleasant. Number three, you really need to have a basic understanding as to what is incredibly abnormal. I.e., what's going to make that big red flag pop up over your head and you light it up to the ER. Well, number one, anybody with a heart rate over 200, I don't care how old you are, is too darn fast. Anybody with a heart rate of 12, I don't care how old you are, is what? Too, too darn slow. Good. Now, what about breathing fast? Is breathing 60 times a minute fast? It depends. Good. And that's what's not fair. Because for any of y'all, it's way too fast for a baby. It's perfectly normal. And why that's important is some of y'all remember, in many ways, kids are just like dogs. <laughs> Meaning, you put a dog outside in 105 degrees summer heat, how fast does that dog breathe? About 105, what's he trying to do? Cool himself off. Now, your two-year-old daughter's got a nasty ear infection, Tempo 104, how fast does she breathe? Fast, not a hunt for, but she's clipping. What is she trying to do? Cool us off, off. Much more important, use your gut and look at the kid. Because think about it 40 times a minute, pink worm dry sucking on a binky is completely different than 40 times grunting, wheezing, retracting, and working at it. But what about pulse oxes? ALS or BLS? Everybody's got to get a pulse ox, right? Are pulse ox is accurate? That would be sometimes very good. If you're cute and healthy, they're not half bad. If you're freezing cold or trying to die, are they accurate? Eh, not so much. The way we know this is back home in my pediatric ICU, anybody know the pulse ox of a pillowcase? <laughs> It's a little hypoxic. <laughs> I probably ought to put it on a non-rebreather. You know what? It's a pillowcase. <laughs> but what about blood pressures, be honest? In 90 plus percent of the kids that you and I take care of, we do not care what the blood pressure is. Why are we taking a pressure? It's called there's a box on the chart. <laughs> Meaning, with few exceptions, if the kid looks fine, how's their blood pressure? Fine, kid looks sick, take pressure. The problem is, children don't want you to take their blood pressure. Well, you know what? That is a wonderful diagnostic sign that you should somewhere write down in your chart. <laughs> kid was demonically possessed <laughs> and did not allow me to take a blood pressure. <laughs> because you know what? If something goofy happens and it goes to court, I can absolutely defend that with no problems whatsoever. Because if you write down the kids possessed and won't let you take a pressure, their blood pressure was just fine. If the kid doesn't mind you taking a pressure, you really need to take a pressure. Well, that's why we say in healthcare, you remember if man can do it good, a really expensive machine must be able to do it better. And that's why we have those automatic blood pressure machines. Push the button, give you a pressure. Are they accurate? No. Sometimes. If you're cute and healthy, they're not half bad. <clears throat> if you're actively trying to die, are they accurate? Eh, not so much. 
The way we know this, a couple years back at a conference to prove this point once and for all, up in front of the room, they wheeled in a cabbage patch kid. <laughs> they wrapped the cuff, pushed the button, 112 over 70. <laughs> <laughs> Made a believer out of me. Now, if you're going to take a pressure and you're actually going to believe it, you have to use the right size cuff. And this is absolutely crucial because up front, we've got a number one blood pressure cuff, which, if you'll see, is small enough to fit around your pinky. And it reminds you as to the range of cuff sizes out there. Because very commonly in the ER or the back of the rig, you've got a small cuff but an even smaller kid. And you're know what? You're like, that's all I got. <laughs> Something's got to be better than nothing. But remember, if the cuff doesn't fit the kid, your numbers are going to be seriously screwed up. So before y'all write these numbers down to the chart, more importantly, before y'all start chasing your tail and doing something about this allegedly really wacky blood pressure, remember that when it comes to kids, numbers lie all <laughs> the time. If you've been on the streets for a while, you know what? Chances are your gut doesn't. <laughs> 